Hey Dave, so Life's Library is rounding up his reading of the current selected book, We Crossed the Bridge and It Trembled, Voices from Syria. Your story that you told reminded me of the varied intensity of systems or metaphorical bridges that seem to suddenly or gradually creep up or fall beneath us over time. The clashing and manifesting of opposing values in Syria is both awe-inspiring and terrifyingly bone-chilling. So to start, a short story of a very recent bridge fall moment that's not as intense as appendicitis or parents' operation. Last Monday, the college choir that I'm in had the very first orchestra plus choir practice performance for Mendelssohn's Psalm 42. Our soprano soloist didn't come in actually during one of the movements when she was supposed to. Turns out the soloist just turned an extra page. It's just amazing to me how a single decision to turn an extra page can change such a large portion of the actual performance that's seen by the audience. Certain decisions are very central to systems. They're pivotal decisions that shape the entire trajectory and ripples that happen after it. Seeing things unaware to others is like seeing a person's personal bridges that are unnoticed to them collapsing. There are a lot of unrelated to me bridges around me that are being built and collapsing. Dr. Perlman's book is a testament to the most mind-boggling of them that are way out of my reach. But they are everywhere. And it feels easier to knock them down and let chaos ensue rather than build them especially when it involves the cooperation of so many people. I want to build them well for myself and well for others. Regarding the default selfishness, I don't want to embrace the lazy default of being stuck in my own head all the time. The more I continue to read and learn about other people's experience and endure, the more I realize how much is miraculous and how much power and privilege and luck and other factors play a crucial role together, enabling people to create change. I've got bridges of plenty that I'm aware of and ones I don't want to lose sight of. Many that someone has contributed to to building beneath me, before me, but also ones that I've added to and I'm built and I'm proud of. But ultimately, I'm really lucky. I want people to be aware of their bridges before they crumble or before they fall. Awareness and perspective, especially of what people near and afar experience, can help us create, adopt, and maintain worthy ones that are near and afar. And if people are going to persist together in these shared delusions and creative ideas like business and rights and government and these games that we choose to see as mattering, it's best that they're helpful, valuable, and carefully created. I think the question that we should be asking ourselves and discussing together as an entire society and planet is what stories are worth continuing and why? It's devastating to hear that those two people are dead. Driving statistically is probably the most dangerous thing I do every single day. All it takes is a small mistake or bad timing. As I remember John Green saying, life is perpetually precarious. You are never more than a bad break away from catastrophe. And it is tempting to settle in the belief that life is certain, promising, and known but it's not. Believing in it comforts us, but I think with awareness and perspective as we discussed, seeing it is so crucial. That gets me to appreciate every moment with as much perspective and awareness as I can muster. Perspective cultivates awareness and gratitude. Let's do that. More of that. That matters to me. Have a, or you know what? Make it a good day, Dave. I'll see you Thursday.